Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby. I'm a fitness and medicine and today I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Um, I want to talk to you about different topics and maybe different body parts, maybe once a week and give you some good solid foundation to work on in between workouts or instead of a workout, if you're, if you're having a bad day, um, things that are common that I see in my gym and in my practice that I know that are, there are a lot of people dealing with. So today I wanna to address lower extremity swelling. So I know there's a lot of people that have either one side or both sides, lower extremity swelling for um, a variety of reasons, you know. Um, so there are different ways that you can work on that um, to help ease the pain and the maybe the discomfort a little bit and to help your muscles work through that. So first of all, what you can do is do a little bit of cardio work. So walking slowly, doing a recumbent bike is actually really good because your legs are out like this and moving and we're getting that blood flow return. So it's helping those muscles start to pump. You can think about your muscles being a pump to squeeze those blood vessels and help pump the fluid back up to your heart and get it circulated. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to accomplish. And sometimes just a little bit can make, go a long ways. So walking, biking, um, any sort of cardio activity where you're using those legs and using those feet and muscles and working that is a great way to start. Um, another, I'm going to show you some examples of what you can do. So we're going to do some standing ones to begin with. And if standing is too much, then you can do the try, you can try the seated ones, but we're going to try this one. Going up and down on your tiptoes is a really great way to activate that muscle pump. And if you can think about using those toes, splaying them in your shoes, the other way you can do, you can do all of these barefoot. You don't have to have good supportive shoes for these, but if you can splay your toes as big and wide as you can, and just really think about squeezing your gastroc here, squeezing those muscles, going up and down slowly. You don't have to turn this into a balance exercise, but just thinking, I'm gonna use those muscles, start pumping those, that blood and that fluid back up. All right, so do, you know, maybe do 10 and then see how it feels. Especially if, you know, if you're standing in line and you're waiting and, you know, you can just kind of feel, you can just do a few calf raises. I do it sometimes at the grocery store if I'm standing in line. Um, the other thing that is a really good thing to do is just do some standing marches. So we're going to get a few bigger muscles going here. So we got those lower ones going. And now we're going to start using your hip flexors and your, your abs just a little bit. Um, and again, you don't have to make this a balance exercise. You can hang on to something. Just kind of move around. Get that blood flowing in your lower extremities here. So again, you don't have to do a lot. You know, you don't have to exhaust yourself here. Just moving, getting that blood flow and getting that return. Okay, so those are some standing things you can do. There are more things. Um, and I can... I can outline more of those if people need more, but I want to move into the seated ones because this is something you can do anywhere. You can do these seated ones. I always tell people um, a good place to do seated exercises for your lower body is maybe in a recliner. So you can put that, put the feet out and you've got places for your toes and your feet to move. So we're going to start actually seated on the side and just do some seated knee extension. We did a little bit of this the other day, but this is a good way to get, get that muscle pump, get your quads working. Your quads are your biggest muscles in your lower body here. So if you can work first on those calf muscles and those feet muscles, and now your quads. So we're moving on up the chain here, really just nice and slowly thinking about thinking about the fluid, right? Thinking about it coming back up. All of that mind body connection is really important. So you just nice and slowly, maybe do 10 on each side. Again, this isn't meant to exhaust you, but just work those muscles and start working that fluid back up. 
I'm going to raise this just a bit. Okay, so next I want to do heel toe raises seated. So this is these next ones that we're going to do. <clears throat> I recommend that people do in the airplane, especially if you're going to be flying for long distances. Just sitting there in your seat, you know, you can't move far, but you can do this one. You can just raise and lower your heels, envisioning that muscle pump, right? So think about splaying those toes, splay those toes big, grab your shoes and then pull them up, lift your heels, lift your toes, nice and slow. You can do them as much or as little as you want, but on an airplane or after you've been seated for a long time, you know, maybe at a theater or out to eat or in a meeting, you know, different. There's so many ways that you can just do small little things to help get those muscles moving and help get that blood flowing a little bit better. Okay. Now, if you can sit back a little bit in your seat and we're going to do muscle or uh, ankle pumps. So we're pointing and flexing, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. Again, just a good solid range of motion pointing and flexing, thinking about those toes pointing forward and then pulling back. So when you pull them back, think about widening your toes and your shoes, point, flex. And then after you've done maybe, you know, 10 of those or a minute, you could just set a little timer on your watch or we're going to go side to side. So this one is harder for people. You want your feet to move side to side. So you're, you're making your ankles invert and evert. So they're, you know, one is inverting while the other one is everting. So you're thinking about kind of like, you're going to show somebody the bottom of your foot, right? On that inversion. And on the eversion, it's like, you're going to, you're showing the bottom of your foot to your friend over here. So inversion and eversion. You can do these anytime. If you're sitting and watching a movie, you can kick your recliner back and do these. Um, if you're on an airplane, like I said, in a meeting, lots of different ways. Okay, now we're gonna move on up but, um, and do some ankle circles. So I'm just holding my legs up here. <clears throat> that can be tiring after a while. So you can take a break in between these, or like I said, find a place where you can put your feet up, but you can hang those feet off the side of of your, you know, your footstool, or maybe you put your feet up on a ball like this. This feels good. I'm trying not to just make my feet right out front here. Okay, so now we're gonna do some ankle circles. And you can do these either one at a time or both at the same time. So you can really focus on one um, and then focus on the other, or you can do them at the same time. So we were pointing and flexing, and then we were going side to side, and now we're gonna do circles. So just as wide as you can go. Maybe you're gonna hear some popping and cracking depending on what you've had with your ankles over the years. Just nice and slowly, as big a circles as you can make. So you're getting all the way around. And now we're gonna switch and go the other way. Just breathing, thinking about that fluid pump, bringing that back up to the heart, making everything flow properly both ways. You can, you know, you can alternate after three, you know, just go back and forth, whatever feels good. This should feel pretty good. And it may be a little tiring. And this is also really good if you've had any ankle injuries. These are all really good strengthening for your ankles if you've had any ankle injuries. Okay, so we did the circles. Now, um, we're gonna make it a little bit more difficult and I want you to work on the alphabet. So, this may be easier if you just do one foot at a time. So, if you, if your ankles aren't too tired, again, you don't have to do all of these at once. You can maybe do one of them and then, you know, 10 minutes later do another one. Or if you're, you know, sitting on an airplane for a long time, every 10 minutes do another one or something like that. So the alphabet. So you can do uppercase and you know, okay, right. So I'm doing a big C, a big D, 
make big swooping ones with, you could do all capitals. And then go through and do all caps with your other foot. You may find it's a little easier with one foot than the, than the other. But this gets all the different ranges of motion kind of at the same time. So if you don't want to think about it so much, you can just kind of do some ankle circles and points of flex. But then if you're, you know, you want to think about it a little more and get even more strengthening or more ankle pump um, action, more muscle pump, try the alphabet. So you can try uppercase, lowercase, cursive, maybe write your name, maybe, you know, write the work, you know, a, a phrase of a song. You know, there's so many different ways you can do it to keep, you know, just kind of mix it up. And if you do have ankle weakness or an ankle injury or lower extremity swelling, this is something that you should add and try to do at least a couple times a week um, or at the end of a long day or at the beginning of the day before you start your day. Depending on where you're feeling your weakness or your tightness, you know, this is great to loosen them up, great to strengthen them, great to pump that fluid out of your lower extremity. And like I said, always really good for an airplane. So go ahead and give those a try. And then for stretching, after all of that, you may feel like you would like to stretch. So this calf stretch where you put one foot back and we're stretching your gastroc here. So you can hold that one for 30 seconds and then maybe bring it forward and bend that knee. And then we're gonna get your soleus, which is the one right underneath your gastrocnemius. And this is also stretching your ankle, right? And if you feel like you're, if you think, think about your toes spreading in those shoes or on the ground, it's stretching your feet too. So you're getting a lot of good stretching here with these and make sure you do both sides. So I want you to do 30 seconds on each side. I'm just demonstrating here, but you can hold these for longer. And then a hamstring stretch is always a really good one. So if you put one foot up on the side of your bed, or you can put one foot out straight like this, this the action is the same. I want you tall and tip at the hips. So you're, if you're here, you're tall, you tip at the hips. Don't let your back bend and do this. All of a sudden you take all that muscle tension away. You make your joints kind of go blue. You want all your joints in line so that your muscles are taut around them and they can get a proper stretch. So then you can do a hamstring stretch. If you're in a confined area and you want to do these stretches, it can be a little more difficult, but if you can get up and walk to the bathroom, which is good to do anyway when you're on an airplane, get up every now and then, move around, get all of that moving. And then you usually what I do when I stand in the aisles in the in the airplane is I do a little this, stretches your hamstring this way. So when my back is taut, I'm stretching through the hips like this. My hips are you know, kind of scooted back. And then the quad stretch. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. Um, if you're able to, you can grab your ankle, right above your ankle actually. Um, if you're not able to do that, that's okay. Another great way to do it is to use a bench or use a kitchen chair or something where you can put your foot up on it. This might not be easy in an enclosed space, but if you're home and you're trying to get a stretch in, put one foot up. My knees are in line and I'm just trying to stretch that big muscle in the front of my thigh, my quadriceps, standing up nice and tall and to get a little bit better stretch and maybe involve your hip flexor a little, you can just kind of tuck your hips under just, just a touch, not a lot. You don't want to do too much. When you put your foot up on a chair or a bench, do it quickly and you can press your toe down just a little bit to release your hamstring. Um, it's common to get a hamstring cramp here, so we don't want that to happen. So if you press your toe down, it will release your hamstring and then relax so you can get a good stretch here. After you've held that one for 30 seconds, you can do the other foot. Nice and tall. and breathing. Good. So that was a good little lower extremity workout in addition to just really thinking about that muscle pump. Like I said, lower extremity swelling, any ankle weakness or ankle injury or ankle pain, 
Of course, you don't want to do this if it hurts um, or if it's causing more joint pain, but you can start with small range of motion and then get bigger as you get stronger and as you get more um, loosened up and that swelling, hopefully, it, you know, it's definitely something that you might have to work on daily, um, maybe a couple times a day, depending on your level of lower extremity swelling, but this is a really great way to help combat that. Please let me know if you have any questions. Of course, there are more things we can do, um, but I wanted to give you a good um, base layer, something you can do every day, and something that's easy to understand and easy to get done. All right, please, as always, let me know if you have any questions. You can private message me. You can leave a comment um, or get a hold of me through my website, and we can address it. All right, we'll see you next time. Have a great week, everybody, and enjoy.